Ready? Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a brand new week of streaming. Welcome to a marathon of streaming. Ladies and gentlemen, I will be here this week for eight straight days of content. Woo! It's going to be an interesting one, that's for sure. On today's show, a big return show, we've got a lot of news. We're talking about Nintendo suing Pal World eight months after the game came out. Hmm. Also, Sony is celebrating a 30th anniversary with a collector's edition product line, which we'd like to look at together today and get your opinions on. And um, one of the biggest things, at least that I heard about during my day off, um, YouTube is going to be implementing a brand new system called Hype, and we'll talk about that this morning. Plus, I finally found the Ethan Ralph video. We can actually watch it live here together. All this and more on today's loaded episode of the Level 1 Podcast. Hmm... All right. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're all having a good one. And welcome to a very, very packed edition of the Level One Podcast. I'm back from break. Yesterday was my day off. And let me tell you, my schedule going so crazy these days. Um, Basically, I had two choices this week. Choice number one, have a day off in like three or four days. Or choice number two, have a day off in like nine days. <laughs> hmm. And it was like, well, I just had my day off. It's like, do I really have anything going on next week? And the thing that sucks is if I'd taken the day off kind of in the middle of the week like that, it actually would have uh, affected the release of Terry Bogard in Street Fighter VI, which I know a lot of people like it when I'm playing with these new characters as soon as they release. Um, a lot of people were here for the Akuma and M. Bison releases. Uh, and a lot of people are excited for Terry. And like, if I'm not there for the release and I'm two, three days late, I'll be behind on tech and, you know, be playing catch up. So basically I was like, well, I guess I'm just going to take this, the latter option. I'm going to have my day off much later. Oh, by the way, I forgot to turn on all my stuff. Here we go. I guess I'll do the much latter option. I'll, I'll take my day off much later in the week. Um, so it is what it is, you know, uh, sucks that I can't really have a consistent schedule, but this is life when, you know, your spouse works retail and they won't give her a consistent schedule. We try over and over, and they, they just don't listen. They do whatever they want. Um, so the good news for you is that if you like me and you like my content, you're in for a treat. This week is going to be absolutely, positively jam-packed with content, okay? But, yeah, <laughs> it's going to be interesting as I try to get through the week. There's going to be some stuff happening this week. First of all, you've already seen some of it or heard some of it. I've got new things that I'm going to be implementing in my streams over the week. Perhaps some new artwork, perhaps some new music, um, and alternating the intros to the show, as et cetera, as you guys had suggested. Previously, people had said, I was doing too many intros. I was doing, like, uh, first an intro that was, like, the intro music with the guitar. Then I was playing, like, a song. Then I was doing my cold intro. Then there was the crown. Then there was, and like, too many intros, right? So I'm going to try to reduce the amount of intros, maybe alternate between the intros, okay? People are saying, turn your mic volume up. My mic volume is all the way up. Like, all the way up. I have not changed it. So I don't know why you guys think my mic volume is lower. I haven't done anything to it at all. Um, 
and I certainly didn't touch my mixer device, I guess I could try to turn it up further, or maybe I could tr see if I could artificially boost something. Sounds fine. Some people are saying, no lag or volume issues. Others are like, you sound really low. <laughs> how could that be possible? How could, it be, how could different people be hearing different things? Right? I don't even understand what that means. My overall volume mix is quite high. I've changed it recently in the last few months to make it better, and no one has complained. And I'm taking a look at my mic settings right now, and... If you'd like, I can boost them. Hold on. Yeah, if you'd like, I could try to boost the mic a little bit. Um, all right, let's do that. I don't know how many decibels would work. The desktop audio, the Avermedia media audio was reduced because it was too loud. And the mic audio should be buffed, but it looks like maybe the buff removed. I don't know. Um, let's do... I don't know. Let's do a three decibel boost. Okay. So now my mic should be boosted by three decibels. Does that sound better? Let me know, because I boosted it by three decibels. And I could, keep, I could go, I could do bigger boosts too if needed. I just don't know what happened. Maybe settings reverted or something. I don't know why. But uh, I'll fit, you know, I want it to sound good. That's better. Okay. So the three decibel boost was good. Okay. And let me know, because here's the thing. Now when I play games, I'm going to have to know if my volume is too loud or too low, because it's probably going to screw everything up, right? I, I don't know. So let me know when we play games later, okay? Sorry about that. All right, so anyway, I'll be implementing some new stuff this week. You already heard a new intro song that someone made for me. I don't know if you guys liked it or not. Some people said they did. Others were like very 80s. That was kind of the, that was kind of the deal, like trying to make it like an 80s intro. And as you know, my, my podcast intro... That, that you know the animation I've been using for a while, uh, maybe looking for a new one at this point, but don't know you know if I'm gonna be able to get one. I, I can't make it. You know it's up to fans to do that kind of stuff. Um, I guess we'll see. So let me know if anyone's interested in maybe working together a new intro that could like you know be with that music. But um, so anyway, yeah, there's that going on. So there's so much to talk about, and I don't want to be scatterbrained today. Yes, Jade, how you doing, man? Good to see you. And I know that you probably won't, you're not going to stick around for Warhammer. You'll probably be here uh, tonight, right, for MVC? Okay. Um, one thing that apparently is happening that no one knows what's going on. Um, YouTube membership gifting is possibly glitched. And what I mean by that is, so the other day, someone said to me, Phil, do you have any free memberships to give out for the month? Because what happens is YouTube usually gives me 10 memberships to give to the audience. And... I give them out at random times. Sometimes there'll be like a hype stream going on and I'll give them out or whatever. And the other day just so happened, you know, someone brought it up and I was like, oh man, we're more than halfway through September. Let me go ahead and check and do it. And I went to do it. And all you do is you go to, when you're watching a YouTube stream, there should be like a, if, if that stream's monetized, there should be a little dollar sign icon. You click on that and then it opens up a menu that says things like super chats and memberships. So there's a membership gifting and you click on it. And for me, it, it usually says you have 10 gifted memberships. Um, you know, here you go. And I would give them out. So I go to do it, and the menu just sits there, loading endlessly. Endlessly loading, loading, loading. I don't know what's going on. So I tried my other channels, my other YouTube channels, because I have three. All of them are doing that. And I'm like, wow, I wonder if it's just a temporary bug or whatever. So this morning, I went to try it again, and it's doing the same thing for me. And I actually asked around with my moderators, and some of them confirmed, yeah, it's doing the same thing for them. And I even went, because I thought, I just want to make sure that it's not just affecting my channel. Because you always got to wonder the amount of, the, you know, idiotic detractors and the dumb shit that they do. Did they somehow affect my channel? Let me go check other channels. No, I couldn't do it with other channels either. Like, I went to someone else's channel that's monetized in a live stream, and I clicked on membership gifting, and it just loaded endlessly. The menu would not load. And I'm like, wow, what is going on? So... The weird part is, I don't know where, how it's affecting stuff. This morning, Perry gifted five memberships. No problem. So, and Perry said that he was on mobile. So, maybe it has to do with the different versions of YouTube on different... And maybe currently desktop is screwed up completely, but mobile isn't. Um, if, if that's the case, if that is the, indeed the case... I'm going to test something right now. Why not do a live test? 
okay? Um, so what I will do is I will log in under DSP Gaming on my phone, okay? I logged into the wrong one. Here we go. And I go to my channel. I'll click on the live stream. So I'm, I'm in my own live stream right now on my phone. Of course, it plays an ad because this is not freaking... Uh, okay, so now I click on here, membership gifting. So it loaded on my phone. It's a desktop issue. 100% it's a desktop issue. Now, the problem is on my phone, it doesn't say that I have any free memberships to give out at all. It's not even mentioning that. So maybe I don't have any more for the month anyway. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, this, this sucks that it's only working on the phone, I guess. So I guess they screwed it all up. Yeah. Huh. I can't even, I don't even know. I'm, I tried it on here. It's still loading infinitely. It won't even go away. So I have to actually refresh and reload the whole chat on my desktop to get it to work now. All right. So. I guess if you're interested in gifting memberships anywhere, right now you have to gift them via mobile. It seems like the only viable way to do it. It's not working anywhere else. So just an FYI to anyone out there, that's not even just my channel. That's everyone's channels. Um, I don't know why that would be. And someone said, is it your PC? No, I did it. <laughs> yes, it's my PC. Of course it is. It totally isn't that I tried three different browsers on three, on three different PCs. Anyway. Okay, so, all right, it is what it is. If you're interested in gifting memberships, they do work, but it looks like you may have to do it through mobile. So thank you to Perry, who gifted five memberships earlier today. Also, Crowplay, I just did a $2 super chat and says, please begin extraction game. What does that mean? Please begin extraction game. What is that? What are you talking about, Crowplay? I don't know what that is a reference to, <laughs> extraction game. Yeah, it doesn't ring a bell. If you can clarify, I'd be willing to, to try to figure out what you're saying, but uh, I don't know what that means. Okay, so real briefly, what I'd like to do is give you a, a few quick positive updates. I'd also like to give you a little schedule update for this week for you know a few days in, so you know what to expect. Since this is a super long week, right? Um, and then we're going to have a lot of news to cover today, okay? So first of all, um, some positive updates. Number one, I am working with a merch company who sell merchandise again. I have sent them many designs. They are currently working on said designs. They're going to work up an initial product line of products, including uh, short sleeve t-shirts, long sleeve t-shirts, um, baseball style t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, and mugs. That's what they have the capability of doing right now. Okay. Maybe in the future, they'll even have more capability to do more, but that's what they can do right now. Um, what they're going to do is they're actually going to work me up a store, a storefront. And that storefront, once completed, will likely be able to be linked into this YouTube channel. Did you ever notice that on certain YouTube channels, there's like merch stores on the channel? So what they're saying is they should be able to integrate it fully into here. So you don't have to go to any third party site. You'll be able to see all my products right through my channel page and buy it right through this page. Yes, the shipping is international. And it has sizes up to 3XL. Because someone had asked me about sizing, like for this merch, like how big would it go? It goes all the way up to 3XL. Some of the designs include various variations on the DSP Gaming logo. I have many different ones, and I sent a few. Um, the Philomania logo, which I did clear up the entire situation the other day that, yes, I own the rights to using it. These people are morons. These detractors can kiss my ass. They've made up everything. Um, as well as various different artworks and things from over the years. So I sent them a decent starter. Oh, the Level 1 Podcast logo. Because a lot of people had actually said, we like your podcast. We made like a mug with the podcast logo on it or something. So I sent them a whole bunch of stuff, okay? And they're going to work up an initial product line. They're going to work with me, and we'll talk about things like pricing and the like. Because um, the truth is, in order to make a profit, it can't be cheap. Like if the, if the shirt's 15 bucks, no one's going to make any money, okay? If the shirt's like 25, 30 bucks, we're all going to make money, me and this company. So people have to be willing to understand that's why the merch will probably be pricey. I don't want it to be pricey. I'd like to work with them to find out what's the sweet spot for pricing for this stuff today. You know, if, if seven years ago, 
I was selling a t-shirt for $20 and I made $1 on it. Obviously, things have changed in seven years. You know what I mean? So we're going to have to try to figure this out, okay? But uh, I will let you know once, you know, we have all this information, you know, where, where it is and all of that. But basically, from the way I'm being, it's being explained to me, I actually will make something off of it. It's not going to, like, be, I'm not going to be rich from it. But I will actually make a good amount of money from each sale. When I was with Teespring years ago, no, that wasn't the case. Like, basically, they made all the money, and if I wanted to keep the price reasonable, I made, like, nothing on it. If this company, I'm going to make a good amount of money each sale. So, it actually will help me for you guys to buy the merch. As opposed to with Teespring, it was more like fan service. This would actually help, okay? So, there you go. Um, cool. So, that's coming up. I will let you know when I have more information about it. I don't know exactly when it'll be ready. And then what happens is once the initial product line launches, okay? If the products do well, then we can think about, hey, maybe I can actually like commission someone to do some artwork of designs that you guys want, right? Like that would be cool. But I don't have, you know, right now I'm just working with the ex existing stuff that I have. I haven't had anyone make new art for me or anything for this stuff. It's just shit stuff that's been sitting around for years. If the, you know, the initial line does good and people show interest, maybe I would go out there and I would find an artist or two who'd be willing to draw some stuff up. And then we could use that for a new line of products, you know, uh, for your requests and your, your you know, uh, suggestions. So we'll, we'll talk about it, but let's, let's get the, sh the shop set up and then we'll, we'll talk further. How long will it take? I've been told it takes about a week to set up the shop initially. And then I, I'm not going to launch it right away. Like I want to work with them to get the products in line, pricing in line, everything. And then we'll go from there. Okay. So I'll let you know when I have more info. It's, it's all positive. I mean, I couldn't believe it that a company is willing to work with me. I mean, I've been going back and forth with them for a little bit. And I was like, wow, this is excellent. Because finally, someone who's not afraid of stupid online bullying by fucking detractors or idiots, right? So that's cool. Um, so that's good news, right? Um, in regards to upcoming interviews that I'm planning to do on DSP Gaming right here on the Level 1 Podcast... Uh, I actually do have some positive updates in that regard. Um, so I am going to begin locking in our next uh, guest on the show. And uh, that should be fun. And that's going to probably be by the end of September. I'm going to try to make it happen by the end of the month. If it can't, it'll be really early October. But I'll let you know about that. Okay? So, you know, I'm interested uh, in getting that locked in. But the thing is... the 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 nature of the guest, the way that it's going, they've requested that I really don't announce who they are until like right before they're going to be on. So it's going to be a mystery guest. I'll tell you right now, no one's going to guess who this is. Okay, no one. But this is something that I'm actually very interested and excited for, uh, for, for a reason. But again, if I tell you the reasons, uh, then you'll probably guess who it is. So I'm not going to say anything. Uh, and no, I'm because people are all going to... It's Wings. It's Medicare. It's no one you're thinking of. Seriously, it's not. Because everyone's thinking of the most dramatic, over-the-top guest. It's nothing like that. Okay? To be fair. So anyway, once it's hammered in, nailed in, I'll let you know the date, and then we'll work towards it. Okay? Now, I already have another person who's lined up for some time in October. We just don't have the date set yet. We have to figure out what that's going to be. Um, and I'm pleased to say that I have st started, uh, discussions with a couple other people as well. One of which I am shocked. And so again, I'm not going to tell you nothing until it's locked in. I'm the kind of guy I don't want to overpromise and then under deliver. So I'm not, none of these people have been locked in yet. Okay. None of them. I'm working with them. But basically, like I said, I also don't want to overload this channel with interviews constantly and then I'm not making progress in any games because that's what happened in the last month. I did three interviews, and each of those days I made significantly less progress or no progress in a video game. So I want to balance this out, okay? Um, as you know, I'm already talking with Wings of Redemption, and I want him to come on, and he said that he will just when things calm down for him, which is what I didn't understand. He had said when things calm down, and I'm like, calm down? About, what are you talking about? Like, on my end, everything's calm. We could, we, we could work on it right now. You know what I'm saying? But it was confusing, but now it seems like things, you know, once things are better for him on his end, then we're going to talk about having him on the show, which I'm down for. I, I would love to have him on the show and have an interview. So we'll see about that. So possibly and likely a guest by the end of the month, a surprise guest. 
in early October, I've already got someone lined up as well. I got someone who I'm talking to behind the scenes who would be a fascinating guest that I think everyone would enjoy uh, for various reasons, but it's not locked in yet. And then I'm working with like Wings and a couple others. I also have someone who I want to be on the show, but they're very busy right now. And they said possibly near the end of the year. And I'm like, I'm willing to wait. That's cool. So anyway, there's stuff work I'm working on, but I will let you know again once we solidify it. Likely, you don't have to worry about this this week. Maybe maybe if, if possible near the end of this streaming week, because I am here today, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Eight straight days of streaming. Okay, so maybe by like the very end of this week would be the interview. If not, it would probably be, like I said, like very late or early October, this this next interview. Okay. Okay. Um, so there you go. So that's all positive stuff. Merch is coming soon. Maybe within a week. We'll see. I'm working on future interviews. I'm here eight days this week. I'm excited for that. Um, and stuff is moving. Stuff is a moving. Let's just put it that way. Okay, now in regards to my schedule and the games that I'm playing, uh, very shortly we may see like a, a shakeup. Okay, and here's why. Today, we're playing Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2 after the podcast ends. And from what people are telling me, I'm going to finish the campaign today. Like I'm actually going to wrap it up. So if we finish it, great. Then we can move on to something else, whether that you want me to try the online play of it or if you want me to move on to another game. Now, right now, the next major thing I'm planning on doing is playing with Terry Bogard in the Street Fighter 6 DLC coming out this coming Tuesday, the 24th. So maybe we could do a different game. And I was thinking that game, The Casting of Frank Stone. It's a horror game based in the universe of Dead by Daylight. It's a game everyone wanted to see me play earlier this month, but because I was so busy with everything going on, I, I couldn't do it. Um, so maybe that would be the next one. We'd be balancing that with Astrobot with fighting game stuff. Okay? Anyway. Um, so that's the next possible one. By the way, some tips are coming in, and once I finish the schedule, I will shout these out. Thank you, guys. Uh, tonight on the late stream, 6.45 p.m. Pacific time, it will be the Marvel vs. Capcom collection returning. First time in a week I'm playing it. I played the heck out of it when it first came out, and then I stopped. I didn't play it for like a week. So uh, I'll be playing that tonight on the late stream. Hopefully the collection works better. Some people are saying it is working better simply because less people are playing, so the servers aren't as hammered. Well, if that's the way they got to do it, I would have preferred if they just patched it and made it work better. But I guess they had to wait for people to quit the game outright or something. I don't know, right? Um, tomorrow, on the daytime stream, it will be Astrobot. Continuing on, we're going to finish up World 3 and probably do the majority of World 4 out of 5. Um, and then tomorrow night for Friday Night Fights, I will bring back Street Fighter 6. I'm just not sure who to use. At this point, I think the last character I used was Honda, right? So now I'm wondering, should I bring back Blanca? Should I bring back Bison? Should I do Dalsim? I'm not sure. But I want to do Street Fighter Six on Friday night. And then Saturday, this is where it's kind of up in the air right now. Because on Saturday, I'm not sure what to do on the day stream. It depends on if we want to see War Warhammer or not. If not, then I probably want to start something new on Saturday. Um, whether it's, the again, the casting of Frank Stone or something different. The, the question is, what should I do? And then... Uh, Saturday night, what did I plan for Saturday night? I had it set. Hold on, let me find my own schedule. Now I'm forgetting. I'm having a brain fart. This is what happens when you don't look at it for a couple of days. I had a day off. Uh, here we go. So Saturday night. Oh, that's right. I want to do my first ever uh, WWE Champions weekend stream. Because on the weekends is when all the events happen. So this weekend, there'll be a special event taking place that's going to have uh, a special uh, mode called Faction Boss going on. Um... I don't know if I'll be able to do it live. It depends on how many faction members will be online to do it together. Um, but it's, it's also the best time to play the game because it has, like, the best loots. Like, the loot on the weekend will be the new characters for the month. So it'll be a great time to play on Saturday night. Um, so there you go. And uh, so that's that's special. That's something different, right? We haven't done that yet. Sunday's React Day. So all day long on Sunday, I'll be doing, uh, I'll be doing a React content, you know, on the... DSP React channel will be the weekly clip show DSP versus the internet. And on the late stream, Retro React to Resident Evil 1 Director's Cut. Then on Monday, we'll swing back to Astrobot. And we'll probably do like maybe more Marvel Collection that night. And then Tuesday, all day long, will be Terry Bogard in Street Fighter 6, where I'll give him a fair shot. I'll see if he's good, see if I like him, and see if I want to try to get him to master or not. Okay? Um, and then we still have Wednesday and Thursday. And again, it's up in the air because I'm not sure if I'm going to have an interview this week coming up or not. 
Uh, if not, then the day streams will just be more gameplay, whether it's more Astro Bot or whatever. It'll probably be more Street Fighter Six, and whatever the new game is that I play, I'll probably play more as well. So it's going to be pretty a pretty packed week of fun stuff, okay? That I think you guys will very much enjoy. Me too. Like, I'm looking forward to it. A long week of progress here on DSP Gaming. Cool. Okay. So before we get to any other topics, let's do shout outs, shall we? I start today with a dollar tip. Oh, and by the way, just for the record, um, just for the record, um, the King streak did end back on Wednesday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. What is today? Today's Thursday. So it was Tuesday. I can't even remember what day it is anymore because my, my schedule keeps changing. So on Tuesday, the King streak ended at 12 during the Astro Bot stream. But then on the late stream with WWE Champions, we hit the goal again. So obviously what we'd like to do is get it going again. So if you like the content, please support it. Please tip. Tipping helps a ton. And by getting that momentum back, we get things rolling, especially for an eight-day week. Think about it. That's a lot of streams. That's uh, 16 streams. We could get 16 just this week coming up. So let's get the moment, the momentum back. We already got one. Let's get it to a real streak by hitting two as soon as possible today. Let's get some tips in here, all right? And by the way, <clears throat> we currently have almost 400 viewers. Thank you so much for that. Let's get some likes. We got 55 likes on the stream. If you're here for a fun podcast today, you're excited for the gaming news and the Ethan Ralph segment, please uh, click the like button right now. Let's get the likes up and hit 100 likes, okay? The engagement is key on this channel. It's been helping a lot. Let's keep it going. And any contributions appreciated. Obviously, this whole membership gifting thing is confusing to me. Hopefully, it works. Apparently, it works on mobile, at least. Uh, but anything appreciated. Super chats, memberships, tips. But let's get the street going back, okay? So our first uh, tip today is a dollar tip. And uh, it's from the Dark Side Child Returns. Thank you for a little bit of an update there. Dark Side Child Returns. We've been talking about a few things behind the scenes. And uh, I appreciate that update. Thank you. I'll look into that later. Uh, I received another dollar tip. And the Dark Side Child returns. Regarding all this going on, I would recommend keeping and using social media platforms on mobile just in case. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I Usually I have everything on everything. Like, no, no, I'm on X over here on this gaming PC. I'm on X over here on my desktop. I have X on my laptop. I have X on my phone. I have X everywhere. Um, I can basically do it wherever I need to. Um, I don't know. Sometimes the various versions of these different things d work completely differently, which is so bizarre, but it's true. Why is it that people can gift memberships only on mobile right now? It doesn't make any sense, you know? But anyway, thank you. Thank you for the tips. Uh, I received a $2 tip. <laughs> you should get the guy you sold the down from the Raptors account to on as a guest of the podcast. Number one. I'm fairly certain that a person who purchased a game account on a mobile game does not want to be publicly known and harassed. That's number one. Number two, I don't know who it is because I didn't sell it directly to anyone. I sold it to someone who then sold it to someone, you know, that's how it works. So <laughs> that's a kind of a silly thing that you said there. You really think that someone who bought an online mobile game account, right, to get a head start or whatever is then going to want to be publicly known? Of course not. What a silly thing to say. Okay. I received a dollar tip. Uh, Dark Side Child Returns, thanks. No, we'll talk about this stuff later, okay? <laughs> He's talking about all this stuff that obviously we don't want to talk about publicly yet. Uh, no. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Thank you for the dollar tip. Okay. And uh, I received a $2 tip. I like the interviews. For Street Fighter 6, I enjoy your games with Dalsam and Honda most. Keep on rocking. Thank you so much. That was another anonymous $2 tipper. So we got the momentum going, right? We're at seven bucks in tips. So let's, the way that we've been actually getting a lot of hype and momentum is basically saying, hey, we got a $2 tipper as the top tipper. Who's going to be the, the $3 tipper that's going to unseat them and become the top tipper of the stream and sit on that throne, right? So who's it going to be? Right now, the top tip is only 2 bucks. It's very easy 
to uh to knock that person off of their pedestal and to get that uh to get that uh what you call it uh notor a notoriety right so who's gonna be who's gonna be the three dollar tipper right let's get them in let's get it going and now I, I told you I would do live shout outs during the show so absolutely we will talk about it uh, as it happens I'll give you a live shout out okay and let's uh let's keep everything rolling. Now we're going to move on to some news, but thank you guys, guys. 67 likes. Let's get that up to 100. We're at 67. It's free. It's easy. Just click the like button. It helps the channel immensely. Let's do it, okay? Cool. Okay. Um, Let's start with gaming news today. So our first piece of news is bizarre, to me anyway, but let's talk a little bit about it, okay? So number one, on today's docket is my contents include DSP Gaming. DS Wait, no, that's not it. I'm reading the slide. Here it is. Nintendo is suing Pal World developer Pocket Pair. Yes. And by the way, this is way too stretched out, but actually kind of works for this website. So I'll leave it looking like this for now, but I'll probably fix it after. Um, so you want to say, what? Wait, what? Pal World? First of all, who's still talking about Pal World, right? No one. Pal World did really, really well in January and February of this year. It was the talk of the town, you know, both on PC and on Xbox. This thing was the ultimate hybrid of Pokemon with other game franchises, right? It had guns. You could ride these things all over the place. It was zany and fun. And, uh, you know, people liked it for like, you know, a month. And then much like all these memeable games, the game kind of just fizzled out. And people still play it, and there's still updates for it, but the player base definitely fell off. Like, we went from millions of players down to a small, respectable amount, but in honesty, that's probably what they were expecting to begin with. They probably weren't expecting it to get the viral popularity that it did, okay? So, in regards to this, um, basically, everyone was wondering when this game came out, back in January, if they were going to get sued. By the way, hold on a second. We got to have a nice Jasper Cam close-up. Jasper Kitty has entered the King's Court. What's up, Jasper? How you doing, buddy? How you doing, Jasper? He's here to grace us with our his presence. The Royal Feline. He's so happy because it's, the weather's cooler now. The windows are open, so there's fresh air in the house. He's in the windows. Oh, and by the way, something I should mention. I have finally ordered blackout curtains for the house, which means... I will finally be able to have, like, the right lighting in here at all times. It will not heat up in here in the afternoons anymore when the sun is out. It's going to be so much better because it's going to feel so comfy in here now, and I'll be able to have fresh air coming in. It's going to be great. So I ordered them. The only bummer is they're not going to come till Monday, which means I probably can't even install them right away. I might have to wait all week. We'll have to see. But uh, yeah, I'm excited for the blackout curtains. Once they arrive, it should actually aid the setup here in the office make it more comfortable for me to make the lighting better for you, for everything. It's going to be a win-win-win. And he's going to love that, too, because he wants to go in these windows, but when the blinds are down, he can't. But if there's blackout curtains, then he could, like, jump behind the curtains. See? So there you go. That's coming. That's in, in play. Um. So anyway, Jasper, I have to talk about Power World now. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Allow me to swap back over. Jasper, I have to push this now. Let me push the button. He's rubbing the microphone with his face. Okay, so the question is, when this when this came out, this game in January, everyone said, dude, this is a blatant ripoff of Pokemon, right? Did we not? We all agreed. The characters, you could tell, were stolen from Pokemon, just slightly changed in minor ways, renamed and everything. But a lot of them had the same abilities. It was very similar. And you're like, how are they going to get away with this, right? How are they essentially just very minorly tweaking the intellectual property and getting away with this. So everyone thought, literally everyone thought, man, they're going to be suing or get sued by Nintendo, right? Well, lo and behold, the game got super popular, sold millions of copies, and they didn't get sued by Nintendo. And the game continued to then kind of lose its viral popularity. And down to, like, now, it really is a shell of its former self. But again, the company's not sad. The company never expected it to be virally popular to begin with. They're just happy for the sales they made. You know what I mean? So they're not they're not upset that it's not as popular as it was in January and February. They're like, whatever. You know, even me, I checked it out for a couple of weeks and I played it for a bit. I'm like, all right, it's played out now. You know, no reason to really 
uh, play it anymore. I've kind of seen everything in the game. But apparently they're still adding expansions and all new modes and all of this, right? So here's the weirdest thing about this story, okay? I want to show you something. I'm using the wrong mouse. That's not going to work. It's never going to work if I use the wrong mouse. So hold on. Here's the real story, and this is why it's so weird. Please ignore all the ads on this stupid site. Nintendo and the Pokemon Company are suing Pocket Pair for patent infringement related to Power World, okay? That statement is the weirdest part of this situation, okay? By the way, thank you to Dick Jones, who just gifted five memberships to the community. Congrats to everyone who just got those this morning. Thank you so very much, guys, for supporting the channel. Um, So why... Why are we talking about patent infringement and what does that mean? Because here's the thing. Everyone thought that for sure this might be like a slam dunk case for Nintendo if it was about um, what, IP, IP, intellectual property being used, which would inv involve two things, copyright and trademark. So for example, I mean, the uh, Pikachu is a trademarked character by Nintendo. No one could just use Pikachu or the likeness of Pikachu in content without Nintendo's permission. Same thing with all the Pokemon, okay? So how did they get, get away with it? Well, they do these minor tweaks to the characters to claim that they're different. It looks similar, but it's not. They change the appearance. They change the name or whatever. But a lot of people, you could say that you can blatantly tell that they ripped it off. This would maybe be something to go to court for. But that's not what they're suing over. Nintendo is suing them over patent infringement. If you don't know what that means, all right, patent infringement means that basically there is a some kind of a, a process or a product or something that Nintendo is claiming the rights to. Like we own the rights to this particular game mechanic and therefore you can't use that game mechanic in your game. We patented it. And so we're suing you because you stole or you're using something that's patented by us. They're actually not saying that any of the characters or intellectual property are the issue. They're saying it's something about the gameplay elements of Power World that they patented that's been stolen. Now, here's the thing. There have been other games like Pokemon before, and none of them got sued for patent infringement, right? Like, people have told me about other games before, like Ghost Trick and stuff like that, where you can catch and raise a monster or a yokai or a ghost or whatever it is as a pet, and then they, they fight for you and all that. So it's not like this, this formula hasn't been used before by another company. So the question is, is that what's patented? Like, what is patented in Pal, or by Nintendo that Pal World is using that they think that they can now sue Pocket Pair? It's, it's confusing, right? Um, and in fact, Pal World responded overnight right here. And yeah, I got to fix this. this is, I have it all stretched out because uh, I was playing WWE Champions the other night. Hold on one second here. That's better. So, basically, Power World Developer Pocket Pair responds saying, we don't know what patents we're even accused of infringing. They don't know. They're like, they're confused. They're saying they weren't notified by Nintendo what patents that they've infringed on. See, so here you go. Here's an example. That's the character from Pokemon. That's the character from Pal World. And you can tell it's basically the same character. All they did is they tweaked the appearance a little bit, right? And the characters have very similar movesets and act the same almost. So they're almost identical. But technically, if they tweaked it enough, they can kind of get away with it, right? So, yeah, look. Regarding the lawsuit, yesterday a lawsuit was filed against our company for patent infringement. We received notice of this lawsuit and will begin the appropriate legal proceedings. We were unaware of the specific patents that we have been accused of being infringing on. And we haven't even been notified of such details. So basically, Nintendo comes out and publicly announces we're suing Pocket Pair, but didn't tell Pocket Pair what they're suing them for. Do you, do you think that's the right way to do it? Like, if you're going to sue someone, right? Wouldn't you just, like, tell the person you're suing first what's going on before you publicly announce your intentions to sue someone. Like, this reminds me of like my detractors being so stupid. That fucking dumbass, super crazy idiot. Oh, I'm going to sue Phil. Okay, well, what are you suing him for? Well, here it is. And there's no case whatsoever. The guy's an idiot. 
right? So everyone laughs at him. You're a fucking moron. You're never going to sue Phil. Even if you do, you're going to, the lawyer is going to take your money and no case will ever, ever appear. But I'm just, I'm confused. Again, Nintendo seems to be going about this the most ass backward way. They publicly announced to the world we're suing Pocket Pair for patent infringement. But you didn't tell them what they infringed. Nor did you tell us for that matter. Like Nintendo didn't actually say, oh, here's the patents they infringed. They're just saying we're suing. So why, if you're going to make the big public to do about it, why don't you tell us what's going on, <clears throat> right? So IGN, because this is an IGN article, IGN asked S experts, could this possibly work, this lawsuit? Peter Lewin, video game lawyer at Wigan, told IGN much would depend on which country Nintendo pursued legal action, given the differences in IP law across the globe. The U.S., for example, has a notoriously permissive fair use defense, which might have influenced where Nintendo used a sued pocket pair. Nintendo's lawsuit was filed in the Tokyo District Court. Ah! Sam Castry, a copyright lawyer and avid Pokemon player, told IGN there was the potential for a court order that would block Pocket Pair from selling Pal World, but cast doubt on the likelihood of a lawsuit. That analysis, however, was in the context of a lawsuit based on copyright infringement. Nintendo's lawsuit alleges patent infringement, although the company has, still has yet to detail which patents. So, what, again, it seems like they screwed this up, right? It seems like they screwed the whole thing up. They don't know what they're doing. If you're going to have this lawsuit, then say what you're doing. Don't say you're doing it, but then hide the information. It's bizarre. Then again, if it's in the Tokyo court, maybe, maybe Tokyo, maybe Japan law is very different. I don't know. I have no clue. I don't, I'm not, certainly have no versing whatsoever. No, in, no knowledge of how law works in Japan. But yeah, it is interesting that they filed this in the Tokyo district court. Hmm. Okay. All right, so more updates on that as it becomes available. In the meantime, um, basically for Pocket, uh, what are they called? Pocket, for Pocket Pair. That's the name of the company, Pocket. For Pocket Pair, it's business as usual. They outright said, we're going to keep selling. We're going to keep updating. We're, do we're going to keep acting like the product. Is you know, there's nothing wrong with it um, until we're told otherwise. So there you go. Um, all right, quick shout out here to Don McLean. Who did a five euro super chat and says boss man Jack was arrested today and will likely be gone for years. DSP outlives another, and also it's time to take the name and become boss man Phil. Who the hell is boss man Jack? What are you talking about? I have no clue who that person is. Well, thank you, Don, for the super chat. I get the feeling this is something that I, it probably has to do with uh, one of these people in the sector, as they say, that I don't know anything about, and and literally, you know, I don't know anything at all. Uh. He's a gambling streamer. That doesn't sound like uh, a good idea. A gambling streamer. Whatever. Never heard of him. I'm sure uh, it sounds like a Kino Casino deal. So I'm sure, you know, when they come back, we'll probably be hearing all about this, right? Thank you, Don, for the super chat. Now, guys, first of all, no one has tipped three bucks to unseat the top tipper of two bucks. Come on, let's get someone right now. Let's do a $3 tip, become the new top tipper. Let's get to the 10 bucks and keep it rolling, all right? Also, we're at 79 likes, guys. Let's get this up to 100 likes. We have over 300 viewers, almost 400. Let's get this up uh, to four to 100 likes for the 400 viewers, okay? All right, so that was our first story down. If there's more information about this, I'll let you know. Our second story is quite interesting, okay? Quite interesting. Hold on one second. Okay, um, so YouTube announced something new. new. New topic, everybody. YouTube announced something new during my day off. Are you shocked that they announced something during my day off? They always do. Like, everything happens during my day off. Um, there's going to be a new system on YouTube soon called Hype, okay? And at first, people were misunderstanding what it is. But this guy, Greg Eisenberg, broke this down really well in a tweet, and I wanted to, to talk about it here today, okay? So here's how this new YouTube hype system is going to work. I'm going to read his tweet. YouTube just announced a new thing called hype, and it's low-key genius. Imagine that you're scrolling and seeing a wonderful video from a small creator. You want to do more than just like or share, enter hype. Here's how it works. You'll get three hypes a week to boost videos that you dig. It's like a supercharged upvote. More hypes means a higher on a special leaderboard. 
Okay, so there's going to be some special leaderboard that's going to be created by YouTube. But here's the thing. It only works for creators under 500,000 subs and vids less than a week old. Okay, plus there's a small creator bonus so the little guys can compete. Here's why this is smart. First, it turns passive viewers into active supporters. People want to support the up-and-comers. Two, gives smaller creators a shot at blowing up. Three, YouTube gets more engagement without messing with the algorithm. Now, that I don't understand because no matter what, it has to mess with the algorithm. Even if this is a different algorithm, it's still going to affect what videos are shown in recommended and stuff like that. So this confuses me because it will mess with the algorithm. I think he's a little off base there. And four, promotes niches so everything isn't watching, everyone isn't watching the same thing, increase watch time. In just the first four weeks of our beta test in Turkey, Taiwan, and Brazil, users hyped over 5 million times across more than 50,000 unique channels, said the YouTube team. It's not about killing the big creators. Not good, because, you know, I'm so worried about those big creators getting killed. I mean, they're, they're really suffering, I know. It's about giving the underdogs a chance to be seen. Exactly. The problem right now is with the way that YouTube changed their algorithm over the years, it only will help a certain group of creators who game the system. There's literally no way to get your video seen on YouTube unless you're also trying to game the system. I mean, fucking Mr. Beast, literally, that's all he does. He games the YouTube system every fucking day with everything he does. And it just works because YouTube is too fucking ignorant to realize that immoral people are gaming their system constantly. You know, the guy, I mean, the guy, we watched an interview with the guy who's the head of the YouTube algorithm a few months ago on my React channel. And the guy was the most fucking book smart dunce I've ever seen. Everything he understood was book smarts, zero street smarts, zero understanding that there's malicious people out there abusing YouTube every day because his system is so abusable and he's so ignorant he can't figure that out. Anyway, um, so yeah, so here we go. It's currently being tested. Let's be real. Social's been feeling stale. Same big account, same content, rinse and repeat. Yeah, so I, like I said, only the same accounts get highlighted on YouTube now. This is well documented that the way the algorithm works, these big time guys have found ways to continuously game the system. So they get all the attention. You know, something just happened because I didn't, I didn't highlight this tweet, but this is an example of it. So someone who's like a, a YouTube guy who makes videos made a video. Why is McDonald's so expensive now? Okay, why is it so expensive? It's a documentary. It's, I think it's like a half an hour long. It got around 300,000 views. It took five days for Asmund Gold to finally get wind of it. Asmund Gold reacted to the entire video. Asmund Gold's video has over a million views. The guy who made the video has gotten no more views because basically everyone just went to watch Asmund Gold watch it instead of watching the guy's video because Asmund Gold's channel is higher up in the YouTube algorithm. So his reaction shows up before the guy's video. So everyone just watches the Asmund Gold react. So the guy worked his ass off to make a great documentary and Asmongold gets all the credit for it. How fucked up is that? So, yeah. I mean, that's how YouTube works. The algorithm's fucked, okay? So when you think, yeah, everything's feeling stale, it's just the same account you see all the time. That's because it's true. Once you're into that algorithm, you will forever be in it as long as you continue to put out similar content and game that system. You will never be kicked out. And that's why the same people are on top constantly and you never see newcomers there. You never see a new video get fleshed out. It's the same shit every day. The same shit shoveling, right? So, here you go. You either don't get seen or you go ballistic. Exactly. Either you're not known or you blow up. And when you blow up, it's rare because it's usually the same people. Hype is like CPR for the internet dream. Suddenly that person making weird videos in their bedroom could be tomorrow's viral sensation just like the good old days. Like literally... That's how YouTube started. YouTube, your TV channel, because you didn't have any way to produce high quality videos because you're just someone who maybe has talent or expertise in something, but you're not rich. You don't have a business to make videos. So instead, you just put your video out on YouTube and hope that it gets noticed because the algorithm used to work that way back then. It doesn't anymore since they changed the entire site so many times. I can see a hype-like feature for platforms like X and Twitter, too, so I hope it takes off. It's about keeping the internet weird, creative, and unpredictable. Now, what it is, it's about keeping the internet interesting because it's people who are genuine, okay? Here's the real problem, 
of what's happened with YouTube over the years, literally the top content is fake. Okay? Mr. Beast's content is 100% fucking fake. There's not a single video he does that's real. It's all staged. It's all bullshit. People are trying to sue him now for reasons like this. It's all crap. It has no value whatsoever, but it's presented to be real. So people think it's real, watch it, are fooled, and the guy's a, a ridiculously rich individual because of this. Because he's a fucking a, a, a charlatan, okay? He is the internet's biggest charlatan at this point. And YouTube doesn't care. YouTube just pushes fake content over and over and over just because it's big or it's popular or because the person behind it is rich and can produce high-quality content and then it gets that push. It's bullshit. YouTube used to be. These videos would be caught by a few people. Oh, that's interesting. Then it would get a few more eyes. Then it would get a few more eyes. Then word of mouth. Then the algorithm would start to give it a push. And so it would show up in, in related or in a trending topic or even on the front page for a minute. And more people would see it. Then it would grow more. Literally, this never happens anymore. It's literally the same people are in the algorithm and never get kicked out. And since they game the system with the same way to stay there, they never leave. Okay? It has to change. Because it is stale now. I mean, YouTube used to be exciting. YouTube is fucking stale as shit. The entire site is the same crap regurgitated over and over. One person does a topic, 72 more people have to do the same topic. And they all say the same shit, make the same points. There's not a, a, a iota of originality in any of the shit they do. Everyone does a stunt video. Everyone does a staged challenge video. Everyone does this and that. It's all the same crap. And that's YouTube doesn't care. And, and the, the real sad p fact is these advertisers, right? The reason that YouTube lost so much advertisement revenue over the years is because their algorithms are fucking terrible. It's literally the only reason. The ads get put on the worst videos, the dumbest videos, the videos that these advertisers will never make money on, right? So let's say, for example, all right, you're a life insurance company and you want to advertise on YouTube. You really think if your ad gets put on a Mr. Beast video that a single fucking person watching that video is going to buy life insurance? Uh, Mr. Beast videos are for children. Dumb children at that. People who are very gullible, who think that he's real, right? So, but that's what happens. The fucking ads just get put wherever, and these companies make no, don't get anything out of it. So they're like, well, fuck it. I don't want to advertise on YouTube anymore. That's what happened in the big exodus of 2017, the big, uh, you know, adpocalypse, is that these advertisers analyzed the effectiveness of their advertisements on YouTube and found that in general, the ads are being put on videos they would never want to advertise on. Some kid saying racist shit a guy talking about terrorism and actually condoning it, right? And that, that, oh, no, here's a Starbucks ad. Like, what the fuck is this? So that's what happened is basically the advertisers saw that Walmart, Starbucks, you know, the biggest advertisers on the planet and said, fuck this site, we're out of here. And, that's, and then, boom, overnight, no one can make a living on ads anymore because YouTube is so lazy. They just run these fucking algorithms. They don't test shit. And they just expect it's going to run the whole site. And they really, that's how the site runs. It's pathetic. So now in the last seven years, what's happened is the big dogs found the ways to game the system, get in its good graces, and then stay there. And no one else can even be seen. So this hype system could be a way that small-time creators can get noticed again. And I emphasize could because here's the problem. YouTube is not trustworthy. These people, again, are book smart, but not street smart. They can code, but they have absolutely no way to know how it will actually apply to the real use of the site. They have the best of intentions, but man, it's like they don't, they don't, they don't live in the trenches like uh, those of us who operate YouTube channels for a living. So they don't know what changes really will happen. They're not working with the site every day. They're not running their own individual YouTube channels to test the features. They just code them. So who knows what could happen with this hype thing? It could work perfectly. It could be completely backfire. You never know. For someone like me, yeah, this could help. For those of you who really like my content, right? So I get I get hundreds of people on my streams every day, and I get thousands of people watching my videos on demand. If every one of you every week chose one of my videos and used your hypes for those videos, I could be propelled to a new level where I'm showing up on related pages, and then all of a sudden, my, my channel gets a boost. I'll give you an example. When the Fallout 4 update happened earlier this year, okay? I played Fallout 4 before the update was out by a couple of days, but I still was able to play it at 60 frames on my Xbox Series X because it has this thing called a like game boost or whatever. So I used it, and because Fallout 4 was in the algorithm, 
And because I played it at that time, part one of that playthrough got something like 30,000 views overnight. It was crazy. Like overnight, it got 30,000 views. All because it just shot into the algorithm. It was on like the featured gaming page. So if just a few of my videos would show up featured, I could actually be relevant again to a mainstream audience. The problem is YouTube doesn't do that shit. They don't care. But with this hype feature, if it does actually work, that could happen. But here's the other problem, all right? What if that applies to everyone? What do I mean by that? If this system works like this, right? What this means is that basically people are going to apply this to everyone who they like under 500,000 subs. So if all the viewers of all under 500K channels all use this practice, right? then it's everyone's going to get boosted equally, in which case, does it even help anyone, right? It would be like, we're all getting the boost instead of no one. It's just, it's a weird system because I get it. Like, I understand they, they again, we want to be fair. Our algorithm is fair. Your algorithm's not fair at all. Your algorithm is insanely broken and stupid and only applies to a select few. But with this system, you can say, well, everyone could get those hype boosts or whatever. You're right. But if everyone gets them at the same time, then does anyone really get a boost, Right. And I guess the other question is, you know, what will happen? Like, how do you get featured? Is it its own area? Hype, hype, YouTube hype. Check out these channels and it's its own section. Because how do you think Mr. Beast is going to feel if his latest, you know, stunt, prank, stupid video actually gets pushed down on the featured page and some nobody with 2,000 subscribers gets their video featured above him? <laughs> right? I mean, that'd be insane. So I guess we're going to see what happens, right? I guess we'll see. I, this is interesting. At the very least, I'd like to see how this works. Because here's the thing. A lot of people say stuff to me like, well, aren't you afraid that this could backfire for you? There's no way. I have a core fan base that watch my stuff and enjoy my stuff no matter what. I'm not afraid that any feature is going to push me further down. I don't get big view boosts because of being promoted on YouTube. Do you understand? It's not like, oh, no, Phil. Now your featured status will go away because others are going to get it. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it now. So I am where I am. Without that, I'm going to be fine. You understand? But, uh, you know, uh, will it affect me positively or negatively? I don't know. Uh, it would be cool if they, they had, like, a, an actual date when they're going to implement this. Uh, but they don't, I don't think. So I guess we'll see what happens. If, if anything... Man, this would be good for gaming channels on YouTube because gaming channels on YouTube don't get any featured status at all. They tried the whole YouTube gaming thing and it flopped miserably. YouTube put no real effort into it and it didn't amount to anything. So maybe this could actually uh, boost gamers again. I don't know. Certainly, I would like that, but I don't think... It, I, I mean, like for me, I'm always so skeptical about this stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just... Will it work? Will it not work? I don't know. I, it doesn't really matter either way, but... Let's see. If I could get a boost from it, that would be great. And trust me, but guys, when this happens, I will absolutely let you guys know. Please use your hypes on my videos, whichever ones you like for the week, you know? Okay. All right. Um, Some quick shout-outs. Darzyak says that they're saying it's going to be sometime near the end of the year. Okay. I guess we'll have to follow up on that. All right. First of all, we've hit 100 likes. Thank you guys for the likes. I appreciate that very much. Over 400 viewers now. Let's keep that going. If you're here on the podcast and you haven't yet, please click the like button. Let's get it to 150 likes. Thank you for the few super chats and thanks for the 10 gifted memberships so far. Right now, let's do some shout outs for tips, shall we? So we have a $2.01 tipper. Now, why on earth you couldn't tip three bucks? I mean, at this point, come on now. So it's Adam. Adam tipped $2.01. And says, am I the new top tipper now? I mean, technically you are, Adam. But you couldn't you couldn't do the three. All right. He, I, I get it. Well, thank you, Adam. You would be the top tipper. However, someone did actually do better than that. Someone did a $4.20 tip from Troll101. I see, I coom, I cope. The king cannot be stopped. Wow. Well, Troll101, thank you for becoming the top tipper of the day with a $4.20 tip. Let's get you up on the leaderboard. Now we're 13 bucks in tips. So now the question is, who is going to unseat Troll 101? Who will be the $5 tipper that will become the next new highest tipper of the day? We will find out shortly, I'm sure. And I received a dollar tip from a troll. 
So I just ignore them and I tell them to kiss my hairy ass. All right. Cool. All right. Good stuff. Let's continue. We have another gaming story to cover today. You ready for this? So, I clicked the wrong thing. So, PlayStation this morning announced a special 30 years of PlayStation product line. And this is it right here. So, it includes the PlayStation 5 Pro, the PlayStation 5 Slim, us, uh, I think this is the Edge controller, which I don't really know the difference between the Edge and the standard controller. This is supposed to be the standard. This is supposed to be the Edge. And I guess this is the, what do you call this thing? The thing that you can play your PS5 over places in your house without a TV. So there you go. You didn't notice none of them have a disc drive. All products sold separately. Limited edition console design takes PS5 back to the early days of PlayStation. Their 30th anniversary, December 3rd, 1994, is when PlayStation 1 was originally released. So, highly limited supply in the following options, okay? So this is the PlayStation 5 Pro console. Can I be honest? This is hideous. These stupid ridges or whatever. You know, that stuff is for like, it's a spoiler on a car. It's supposed to make it more aerodynamic or like you see that on the side of like a boat or like a jet ski. Why the fuck do you need that on the side of the PlayStation exactly? Are you going to be throwing your PlayStation 5 Pro down the hall and it needs to be more aerodynamic? Like what exactly is the purpose of the racing stripe on the side of it? <laughs> right? Like I don't really get that at all. Um, so they're showing you the controllers, the case for the controller. Yes, they're even going to sell the disk drive apparently i guess in gray i don't know what color it actually is normally and the stand in gray as well and they can take a look so these are i'm not even kidding you these are cable ties yes they're going to give you cable ties a playstation sticker and a usb cable that looks like a classic ps1 memory card all that is of course is a piece of plastic you know it's not it doesn't have any purpose but they're trying to be fancy with this stuff and say, oh, look, you're going to have, like, it's all nostalgia, right? With that USB cable. So that's the, the stuff that they're offering. Um, the PlayStation 5 Pro Console, 30th Anniversary Limited Bundle. So it comes with a 2 terabyte SSD, the Wi-Fi, um, a DualSense wireless controller, a DualSense Edge wireless controller. Wait a minute. No, what are they talking about? That's not... Oh, it's a bundle. This is the special bundle comes with all of this. Um, so you get a regular DualSense controller, an Edge controller, a charging station, and a console cover for the disk drive, but the disk drive is sold separately. So you don't get the disk drive. You'll get a cover that to, to have the disk drive, but it doesn't come with it. Yeah. And it comes with the vertical stand and these special collector's items. Controller-style cable collector connecting housing. Uh, four PlayStation sim symbol ties. A PlayStation sticker, limited edition PlayStation poster, one of 30 randomized designs, and a, and a paper clip. A paper clip that is shaped like the PlayStation symbol. Right? Wow. How exciting. A paper clip. Now we're talking. So, and then they're going to do this bundle, which is this, the PlayStation 5 Digital Edition, which comes with the console with a 1 terabyte SSD with one DualSense controller and the console cover and a vertical stand, and again, with this, this stuff here, okay? They're also going to sell the PlayStation Portal remote player that looks like the PS1 edition, okay? They also have a DualSense Edge. Now, I don't know the difference between the Edge and the regular. It looks like it has some extra stuff down here. I don't know if those are extra buttons. What's hilarious is that they put the symbols on the touchpad like it's a big deal. Like, look, that doesn't the touchpad's gonna be exactly the same. It looks to me like the D-pad's the same, the triggers are the same. The only difference I see is on the underside, apparently there's these buttons, right? Okay, so so there you go. It looks like just like my Elite 2 controller, my Xbox Elite 2 controller, apparently this one has the swappable components. It has some swappable thumbsticks and things that can stick out from the bottom. 
So that's really, it appears to be like this very similar to mine, right? It definitely looks, looks similar. So, okay. And then here's the standard one. Oops, I didn't mean to pull this. Yeah, see? Okay. So, they're saying all of this stuff is going to be out on November 21st. Coincidentally, it's exactly the same day as the PS5 Pro launches, right? Uh, there's only going to be 12,300 units of the PlayStation 5 Pro console 30th Anniversary Limited Edition bundle available for consumers to purchase with limited edition numbers etched into the unit. The number represents a month and date of the first PlayStation console launch. So, essentially what this is going to do, this is going to create demand for the PS5 Pro, when a lot of people were speculating, consumers really don't want the PS5 Pro, right? Like, it's so expensive, $700, that a normal person doesn't want it. Now, you notice they didn't mention a price, right? I'm going to guess. This is a guess. You can, you can say, you know, whether you agree or not. And by the way, here's all the boxes for this stuff. They look like the classic PS1 boxes and accessories. Um, I'm going to guess... That for this bundle, this one right here, where is it? Where did it go? Where's the bundle? Oh, I was on the wrong one. Here we go. So for this bundle, where you get the standard controller, the edge controller, the, ca the case, the stand, and the console. If the console alone is $7.99, right? But you're getting two controllers, and one is the more expensive controller. I'm gonna guess that's uh, that's a thousand bucks. That's my guess. One thousand dollars for that bundle, and I I guarantee you it will sell because you know even if people don't buy it, the scalpers will. Since there's only twelve thousand three hundred of them in the world, this would absolutely be a collector's item, and people are gonna want it. Even regardless if they end up playing games on it, they're gonna want this as part of their collections, right? So I would say this bundle will sell well. Just this bundle. As for the standard PS5 Pro, I don't know. Again, I feel like scalpers are going to go crazy for them, thinking they can resell them. I'm not so sure that the PS5 Pro is going to sell as well as Sony wants. I definitely can see this bundle selling very well. And selling out, like, right away. So... If you're interested, I let me. So, what do I think of it? Honestly, I like the aesthetics of it because it's very retro. It's it looks just like the PS One. I just don't like the silly racing stripes on the side of the PS Five Pro. I think that's ugly. But outside of that, I do like the look, the visual appeal of the the PS One like accessories. Like if I were to buy another PS Five controller, I'd probably see if I could get one of those. Like why wouldn't I want one of those? That's kind of nice looking, right? Okay. Um, cool. So let's do some more shout outs. And then I guess we're going to watch this Ethan Ralph video finally. Um, so let's see. S123 did a 10 euro super chat and says, sorry, this wasn't asked before. I couldn't find your answer. Do you know the Russian blogger Lincoln Simpson? He says he's your biggest fan in Russia. Can you say hi to him? Uh, someone named Lincoln Simpson used to be like someone who would comment on my videos back in the day. And I believe that they used to like write to me on my forums. And I do believe at one point they pledged either to Patreon or something like that. But this was like a ridiculously long time ago, okay? I've had absolutely no interaction with this person in so long. You know what I'm saying? I don't know who they are or anything like that. No, I'm not aware of them being a, a, a blogger in Russia or anything like that. But that's my only knowledge of them. I have no clue if this person still watches my content or gives a crap about me. I mean, I've been around for 16 years. This person, like I said, I think there used to be like over a decade ago, used to be someone who would be involved in some, some stuff, you know? Now what the heck just happened? Oh, it worked. Never mind. I'm reading the wrong spot. Okay, so thank you for the super chat. And I received a $2 tip from Game Master. He says, I'm two hours into the Dead Rising remake. My opinion are this so far. The graphics are amazing. The RE engine looks well. Frank's voice actor is way better than his voice in Dead Rising 4. He has autosaves. It's slightly easier, you level up faster, but the game is still hard to a degree. My favorite skin for Frank is the 2006 skin that you transformed to 2006 Frank. I'm liking it so far, at least 50 bucks, not 70. Uh, I've heard that the game does not run very well. Like, I saw some graphic comparisons. They were actually showing, like, the original 
version's intro where the gas station explodes versus the modern one. And apparently the modern one, the graphics are terrible. But I don't know. Like, for me, I don't really care about it because it's a remake. And right now, I'm already backlogged on, like, modern game, new games to play rather than worrying about every remake. And I've already played the Dead Rising remake. So it's like, do I really want to play the remake of the remake at this point? I don't think so. But I'm glad to hear that you're enjoying it. And, uh, you know, thank you for the tip. So, guys, we're going to get to the Ethan Ralph thing right now. But, FYI, 15 bucks in tips. Let's keep that rolling. Let's hit the King Streak again today. Let's get it going again. Top tipper is only $4.20. Let's get a $5 tip in by the end of the podcast and get at least a new top tipper, okay? Thanks to everyone here chilling. Wow, over 460 viewers and climbing. 114 likes. Guys, let's get that to 150. If you're here on the stream and having a good time, just click the like button. It helps a ton with engagement, all right? All right, finally I can do this. Finally, someone found it for me because I didn't even know where this was, okay? I was looking all over the place for it. It's a week old at this point, which is hilarious because I didn't even know it happened, okay? So as you guys know, um, basically this guy, Ethan Ralph, apparently thinks that I've like been shitting on him constantly because trolls apparently made a fake uh, YouTube account. That looks like mine, but isn't me. Not YouTube account, excuse me. A fake Twitter account that looks like mine, but isn't me. And so, apparently, he thought that I was shitting on him, and he got all upset about it and shit. And then he was like, oh, fuck DSP. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this guy. And I'm like, I don't know who you are. Like, I literally don't know who you are. I saw maybe one clip or two clips of this guy during my first Kino Casino appearance over a month ago. But again, I know next to nothing about Ethan Ralph at all. People have mentioned him in my content, like in my streams, every once in a while. Would you go on kill stream or whatever? I was like, I don't even know what that is. What are you talking about? Right? Um, so, in regards to this, I guess what happened was a week ago, all right, um, I had just said, I'm going to do an experiment. And I said, Ethan Ralph, just on my timeline, on, on X to see what would happen. Um, and... I got over 500 likes and everything. It was wild, the amount of interaction that the tweet got. And I was like, I don't know why. I just don't understand because I don't know this guy, right? Apparently, he made a video that day. And this is the video. And I've been looking for it. I couldn't find it. And then fucking someone finally sent it to me. I'm like, it's about time. I couldn't find this damn thing. All right? So let's. I'm just going to watch it. Uh, You know, honest reaction. I, I swear to you, I haven't seen this yet. I don't know what is in this six-minute clip, and I don't even know if this is just a clip that that's put on you on Twitter, or if this is um like there was a longer show and this is just a part of it. It's only six minutes. It's kind of weird to only do a six-minute clip. I don't know. I guess we're about to find out. Um. Oh, by the way, hold on. I received another tip: four dollars twenty-one cents from Adam, who says top tipper finally laughing out loud. I guess you are, Adam. But again, you didn't do a $5 tip. You did a 421 tip, which is very bizarre. I'll play the 420 animation for you regardless. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. Okay. All right. Now we got to get now we really need someone to do a $5 tip to become the the real top tipper and to get us into the 20s. All right? So, let's get a $5 tipper. During this segment. How about that? Okay. So. I want to see what this is about. Let's just find. Again. First time. Hearing this from this guy. Let's see what he has to say. That's the wrong mouse. Bell. You are a real piece. Hold on. Too loud. It was way too loud. Try it again. Hold on. Bell, you are a real piece of shit. Oh, good. Now, you could have just told the truth about uh, spending, I, I don't even know, what, 20, 30, 000, 40, 000 dollars on. No, 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 no. It's like, it's like 4 million at this point, right? I think I spent 4, 5, 6 million on WWE Champions, which is what I'm assuming he's talking about. A fucking gotcha game. Uh, maybe. What? Uh, and I'm what just a happened? lifelong wrestling fan, by the way, but I would never. It could, did it mute? Hold on. My fucking gotcha game. Uh, maybe. It muted. What did he say? 
it muted. I couldn't even hear what he said. Uh, and I'm a lifelong wrestling fan. By it, why is it in black and white? Why is, it, why is the video in black and white, but the logo in the upper left-hand corner has color? What do, I don't get it. Why is it in black and white? I'm very <laughs> NWO. It's an NWO video. It's very weird. Okay. The way, but I would never get sucked into something like that because um, it makes no sense. It's not. It's not fun. All right, hold I'm on. I'm a wrestling fan, by the way, but I would never get sucked into something like that because um, it makes no sense. It's not. It's not fun. It's just stupid. Uh, but you could have told the truth this whole fucking time, and so now that you is this is this the quality of his video or did this X do this? Because look how bad it is it's like pixelated and shit see that that's just like a really low bitrate video it looks cr so crappy but again this could just be he, maybe he uploaded to x and that's what it looks like shit on x i don't know I, i've never put a video on x so i'm trying to play tell the truth you expect some uh, um I, I i don't know uh you know le letter from the pope what is he talking about does anyone know what he's talking about? So he's mad that I lied about playing WWE champions. And now he's mad that I admitted that I played WWE champion. What is he talking about? I don't even understand what he's talking about. To absolve you from your crimes. Um, what crimes? I played a mobile game. What crimes is he talking about exactly? And I don't consider it a crime. I consider it uh you well, does it, being... it doesn't matter what's considered what you consider it, it's not a crime to spend your own money on something like what is he talking about a mark you're a fucking mark you're a f this guy must be a big wrestling fan because you hear the terminology he's using he's calling you're a mark right and that's a that is a wrestling term right it is it's it's a it's a wrestling term for someone who Basically, someone who kind of like believes everything in wrestling and it, it like it has different meanings, but it's not it's definitely not known as a positive term. It's definitely a derogatory term towards someone who's like really either gullible or stupid or falls for stuff. You're a mark. Get it? That's it's just it's been a derogatory term for a while. So fucking loser. You've already been proven to be that throughout your whole career. That's you. Bill Bornell, the mark, the loser. The he hasn't said anything yet. All he said is, it's stupid that you played a mobile game and spent money on it and you're a loser. Okay, so this is like what five zillion others, especially in my very, very intelligent detractor community have said over the years. So I'm just wondering like what actually is his problem with me if he has one. That's what I'm looking for here. Let's keep going. The freak. The absolute dumbass. Would <laughs> okay. Spend, I, I can't even imagine. Like, look, I spent a lot of money uh, on, you know, whores and drugs look. and. Liquor. Wait, wait, wait. He spent a lot of money on whores and drugs. And he's publicly admitting this, right? And he's c criticizing me for spending money on a video game. But he just publicly admitted that he spends his money on whores and drugs. <laughs> what? Like, what? What are you talking about? What? So here's a bunch of things that I've done way worse than you. But man, I'm really upset that you spent your money legally on a video game. I did all this illegal shit that I shouldn't have been doing. And I'm admitting to it now publicly. Okay? But, uh, you know... You did these things that are perfectly fine, and I'm very upset with you. What is he talking about? Right? And everything else. Uh, but God damn it, I've never spent any money on WWE brawlers or champions or whatever the fuck they call that goddamn game. I, I can't even imagine being in your situation. But you now, you're, I mean, you're right. You can't because probably my situation is way better than yours. I mean, from the shit that I've heard about this guy now, all I mean, the things literally people in my stream chat right now, someone just said he has to wear sunglasses because a pimp broke his face and he has a permanent lazy eye. I didn't say that. 
That's what's in my chat literally right now. Right? So, I mean, so you're right. I, I'm, I, trust me, I'm way, way, way better off than you. I've got a wife and a loving family. I've got a great place where I live. I've got a great business. I've got great viewership that support me. You're right. I, I mean, we're definitely not the same, man. There's absolutely no way that it's that's like an apples to, to oranges comparison there. Actually, it's it's more like comparing a delicious uh honey, honey crisp, shiny apple to like a rotten melted avocado, right? Like it's two weeks old, it's fucking mush. That's I guess that's the fair comparison here, right? I used the wrong mouse again. Now you 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 supposedly come you've come clean. And so we're supposed to forgive you. First off, I didn't care in the first place. So, the, so wait, so what are we talking about? Wait a minute. <laughs> he just said that I'm a loser and a piece of crap because I played a mobile game and spent money on it. And then he says, well, I don't even care. So then what, are you, what is this video for? What, what actually is the purpose of this video? You literally just contradicted yourself and said you don't care. And you're right. I mean, when I best up to it or whatever right that wasn't for everyone the vast majority of my viewers and fans don't care they really never did it was my detractors these these stalkerish losers who are all over my ass about every little thing that i do if i fart the wrong way they're on it and say wow that fart smells weird you know what i mean so you know i don't even understand like this was a big thing for them for years and for me to just say yeah the account was mine Let's move on from it. It has. Like, people aren't really caring or bringing it up or anything anymore. So it's closure for me from that whole bullshit, stalkerish arc of nonsense. Now my detractors have no ammo against me whatsoever ever again in that regard because it's done with. So it needed to be done. It had to be done. It got done, right? And now we're moving on. Like, no one cares about this anymore except my detractors because they're upset that they don't have that thing against me anymore. So. I have no idea what he's talking about. Like, it's not even a big thing. No one cares. How, did I come out and say, everyone, please forgive me. Please forgive me. What are you talking about? No. I said, listen, I understand that there might be some people who are upset because for years I lied about it and you feel deceived. And if that's the case, it is your right to move on and never watch my content ever again. So here we are. How many weeks removed from my documentary? I still got good viewership. I've still got great engagement. I got support coming in. I'm making a living, right? So it's obvious that maybe some people did move on, but a lot of them stuck around and still like me. No one cares about this thing, right? Which is great to know. And I'm happy and thank you to those who are still here today, watching the videos, engaging, liking the videos, supporting the content. I appreciate that. So what is he talking about? He, he literally said, he, this is why he hates me. But now he's saying, it's not a big deal. I don't care. So who, So what are we even talking about? What's the point of the video? We're two minutes in. And he hasn't even made a single point yet. Uh, it looks like I received a dollar tip. Let's look here. From the Persona 3 Reload Rabbit Bunny 2017, would you be open to doing an interview with the Rabbit Bun Theo in the near future? He's a cool streamer who loves Persona 3. I know nothing about that person. If anyone wants to contact me about that, they know how to reach me. I have many different points of contact that you can reach out to me. Um, but I'm certainly not going to... On, the, on a dime, drop everything to figure out about this on my podcast. But thanks for the dollar tip. Okay, let's continue with the video. All your money. On this what? fucking bullshit. Like, that's what you did. That was your choice. Whatever. Like, who gives a fuck? Exactly. Uh, but you it, made it. Exactly. That's exactly right. There you go. <laughs> All right. It an issue. By lying about it, Bill. That's what... Who cares? It's already over with. It's dealt with. It's done with. No one's talking about this anymore besides my detractors because they're mad now that they don't have anything anymore on me. So now they're like, oh, fuck, now what? Well, let's just keep talking about it. But the, the horse is already dead. You beat the dead horse. It's over. There's no, no topic left. You're the only ones talking about it. No one else cares. That's what you did. You made it an issue by lying about it. And you're a mark. 
There's no other way to say it. You're, now he's not even. Now he's not even making you're a point. He's repeating smart. the same things he said. You're not, uh, you know, somebody who's like um, in depth. He's high off his ass, isn't he? You could tell. He's droning on. He can't even remember what the points were that he was gonna make. He's barely like able to speak. You could tell he's like half, you know, conscious or whatever. Like seriously. <laughs> Exactly, he's just too high or drunk or both to make a point. He can't make his point. I get the feeling he had a point, and he started making the video, and he couldn't remember it. Right? <laughs> like, he has no point at all. You're obviously just a fucking mark, dude. You're the people, one of the people, that they target because they know you're a fucking idiot. I love wrestling and have... For my whole life, I'm from Memphis. Uh, the Memphis territory is legendary, and I don't want to go through all that right now. Uh, with all that. A lot of people are saying that he's hiding in Mexico right now. Like he's not even in the United States for legal reasons. You're from Memphis, but you're not living in Memphis, apparently. And everything else. Um, but, like, th that's my life. That's my life. You are a fucking mark who spent tens of thousands of dollars on a fucking bullshit game. And? I'm still waiting for the, for the big zinger. And? This is what... It sounds like what happened was my detractors reached out to him and he knew nothing about me. And they really thought, oh, we can get someone on this to hate on Phil. Right? So they just kind of read him the laundry list of shit. And the only thing that really appeals to him is the WWE Champions thing because he's a wrestling fan. So that's the thing he's just going to sit here and repeat over and over. Like, it seems to be like he legit knows nothing at all about me, right? Like, at all. Like, he just, someone just handed him a script and said, here's a bunch of things you could say about Phil. So he just pointed to this one. He's like, that's a good one because I'm a wrestling fan, right? But he hasn't said anything. I don't know. This this is start this is seeming to be a waste of time, guys. This is the video you guys wanted me to react to for like a week. It seems like a pretty big waste of time, doesn't it? And you did that yourself. Nobody made you do that. And who then said, the, who said the that someone did achievement really is that you lied about it. Wow. You lied about it for years. And now you want to come clean and say, oh, that was me. That was my account. Oh, God. Yeah? yeah, that was me. Oh, I actually did do this. No, motherfucker, you shouldn't get any breaks. You Who's... <laughs> What's he talking about? Who's getting a break? There's no breaks. There was no me coming out and, and, and on my hands and knees crying and begging my audience. It was actually a funny segment when it happened. I made it... I was like, this is the equivalent of Scooby-Doo. Where they ran around stalking discords and doing all this fucking legwork to figure out that the account was mine, right? Like, what is he? It's obvious he didn't actually watch the documentary react when I when I did fess up to it. He has no clue what he's talking about. This is some my detractor group gave him like a list and said, "Here you go." But he has no idea what he's even talking about right now. He apparently he thinks that like there was some big sob story. Please forgive me and don't don't leave me and something. What the fuck is he? It never happened. He's nuts. Because he's so misinformed. And by the way, he's so high. It's hard to even listen, right? You shouldn't get any fucking support for your uh, honesty, quote unquote, after what? Five, six years of lying about your fucking account? And as far as I'm concerned, you know, spend whatever money you want. I, like, I really don't care. So, okay, so. <laughs> So what is he, what is the point of the video, dude? I don't even I don't even want to finish it. There's 90 seconds left. Why do I even have to watch the rest? He's literally said in the video repeatedly, "I spend what money on worse things than you, right? And I don't care if you play this game. Spend your money on whatever you want." Yeah, that's my point. Like that was my whole point all along. So you don't have a point. This is the video people wanted me to watch. Why am I watching this? I totally thought. Like, he was going to rip me a new asshole, and he was going to have all these points that were going to bash me, and I was going to have to be like, well, I guess fair enough. You know, we're talking about my past and the fucked up things I did. He's like, he doesn't have a point at all. 
Yeah, but why? Uh. Uh, about you spending your money on this game. But what I do care about is you lying to the fans, which is a constant theme with you. Oh, all right, so there you go. That's that's the detractor point, is that DSP constantly lies to his fans, right? In truth, I don't constantly lie to anyone. The things that I've lied to people about are things that are none of anyone's goddamn business because they have nothing to do with my my public face. It's personal shit that these idiots have tried to data mine and get and put out on the internet as fact when it's no one's business whatsoever, right? My finances are no one's business. What I spend money on is no one's business. My... My personal life with my wife is no one's business. None of this. So if you're going to ask me questions about shit that are not your business, of course I'm going to lie about it because it's not your fucking business. You shouldn't even know about it. I don't come out here and lay out all my dirty laundry to everyone every day on my streams. I'm not Review Tech USA. I don't do that shit. I don't put that stuff on you guys. Like I said, there's been stuff going on this year that's been pretty fucked up behind the scenes stuff between me and my family and my, and my wife and stuff. And I'm not going to lay it all on you guys because it's none of your business. And you, you're not my fucking psychiatrist for me to be laying all that on. You're coming to my streams to hear fun, popular, interesting stuff. You want to have a good time with me. You want to relax. You want to chill. That's what I want to do. I want to put that content out for you. You know, and maybe in the past, that was a mistake of mine. I overshared and I'm trying to not do that anymore. Correct? Really? So I don't even understand. He has no points whatsoever. The only things I lie about are dumb things that no one should even care about anyway, like a fucking mobile game account that's no one's fucking business because it's not a public account, right? Like, what is he talking... It would be one thing if, like, there was monstrous uh, amounts of lies about tons of things that were awful things going on behind the scenes. There just was a four-hour documentary made about me, and most people have admitted watching the whole thing. The best parts were the early parts about me causing drama in the FGC and my early YouTube days. Now, all this recent drama shit, no one cares about boring. They're bored. At the end of the documentary, they're piss bored at how long it was to go over all this minutia of nonsense that nobody really gives a fuck about. There's other people out there. There's other people out there that are so much worse than anything I've ever done that nobody cares. So what the hell is this guy even talking about? He, has no, he hasn't made a single point yet. I'm still waiting for one. Your fans lying about what you need, lying about the fundraising that you need. Lying that's that. That's completely false. I've never lied about a fundraising that I needed. Anytime that I used to do those streams, it was legit. I needed the money for stuff. Right now, maybe I misspoke. For example, the one that June called me out for was that I did a fundraiser. I said it was going to go to taxes, and then later I said, "Well, just so you know, you know, some of that money went to groceries and things this week. I still need money for all my basic stuff." People were like, we thought all the money was going to taxes. In reality, no one cared. No one gave a shit. This was never drama at all. It's only my detractors that ever made drama out of it. But that's the kind of minutia bullshit, right? Oh, we got you on a fucking semantics thing. Who cares, right? But I haven't done any fundraising like that in ages. I don't plan on doing it unless there's ever an emergency. People have actually told me, all right, many, many, uh, hold on. A troll just distracted me. Um, People told me, why don't you do fundraising streams? For example, I wanted to get a new PC for the longest time. And people said, why don't you do a fundraising stream? I said, because here's why. I feel like people would come out and support it. But then what would happen is then they can't support the regular streams because they just went over the top to get me a new PC. So it's just going to shoot myself in the foot. If I cry wolf about some bullshit to make the money, that would that's awful. I'm not going to lie and be like, oh, there's something else I need the money for and then spend it on a fucking PC. I'd never done that. But the thing is, the detractors have always made shit up. For example, I literally did do a fundraiser for taxes in 2019, and then my parents paid for my trip to go to Connecticut uh, to visit them and to get married. They paid for it because I didn't have any money. All my money went to taxes and shit. So, but then my detractors make that up and say, well, you know, no, he really spent the money on the trip. But I didn't, and you have no evidence of that. All the problems that people have with me are for shit that people made up. And the stuff that's been proven to be true is stupid shit no one cares about. So there is no history of constantly lying to my audience about finances to make money. That hasn't happened at all. The things that I've asked for were truthful. But he doesn't know that because he's just listening to the laundry list of shit from my detractors, right? There you go. Think about the washing machine you need. 
lying about the fucking huh? you know, so and so you need. Who lied about a washing machine? I said my washing machine is breaking and I'm going to buy a new one with the money I've already made with the newfound attention that I got in the last month and a half. Who lied about a washing machine? He doesn't even know what he's talking about. He actually is completely misinformed. And and these are people, you know, I take this seriously, honestly. Like people think like, you know, I'm cutting a promo obviously, but like Wait, what? You're cutting a promo? You are? See what I mean? He's he is like one of these fucking ultra anal people about wrestling. He thinks he's cutting a wrestling promo right now. Does this sound like a wrestling promo you've ever heard? Maybe this was like when Jeff Hardy in TNA was high off his ass on drugs and he tried to cut promos and wrestle, so Sting just threw him to the mat and pinned him in real life and got the title, and then he was Jeff Hardy was all pissed. Like, that's about it. It's about the only thing that I would say is like close to being a you're not cutting any promo. There's no promo here. You if you were actually cutting a promo, you'd be immediately, you know. Pulled out of the ring, thrown to the locker room, and get the shit beat out of you by everyone back there because you're embarrassment. Like, what are you talking about? This is not a promo of anything. It's terrible. <laughs> you know, if if I was in trouble, if I was in real financial trouble, and I came out here and said, "Please help me," like you know, I need your help. Uh, people would help me. Okay. But and? you do that on the regular. And no, I don't. See what I mean? This is what the detractors have told him. I haven't done that in years. I literally have not done any kind of a special fundraiser in years. It's been many, what, two, three years since I did one? Right? I think the last one that I did was when I got kicked off of Twitch. They kicked me out of the partner program, and I was like, now I'm not going to get my money because they kicked me out of the partner program. I think that was the last one I legit did. Once I started making consistent money, and I'm, you know, financially I'm recovering now, I don't do that stuff ever, you know? Do I say, let's hit a goal, let's do this? Yes, I do. I want to hit goals. I want to make consistent money. It's good to motivate the audience. I'm trying to motivate you guys now in positive ways rather than negative. The negative reinforcement of, oh, no, I can't pay a bill if I don't make a goal, that's going to be far less effective than saying, hey, let's get hype. Let's get someone right now who becomes the new top tipper of the stream and takes the throne down there. Who's going to be the $5 tipper by the end of this stream? Which, by the way, it would be nice if someone could be a $5 tipper by the end of this podcast. That would be great. That would, hit, that would be perfect. So let's do it, actually. Okay? So that's what I mean. There's a difference between positive and negative motivation. Correct? And I'm trying to be a positive motivator instead of a negative motivator. And that's something that I'm learning slowly. That's something I'm learning in time. This year, I've made tremendous strides in trying to improve my content. I've changed the way that I title videos. I'm not, I'm doing stream highlights. I have better quality videos. I have better quality. Everything is better. I'm reinvesting in the business. Look at all the changes that I made to the business in the last couple of months since I started making good money, right? This guy has no idea what he's talking about at all. He's slurring his words. He's obviously drunk higher bull. He's a fucking human embarrassment who is a grown adult, and he's talking about cutting a promo, but he's not a pro wrestler, right? He's saying Mark all the time. This, he's just like the most embarrassing version of man, honestly. Like, he's not even his own self. He thinks in his mind he's a wrestler cutting promos. Dude, you're a guy in sunglasses with a Tijuana Republic hat, a Los Angeles Killstream hoodie, sitting in a knockoff gamer chair that probably is worth about 20 bucks, with the black and white filter on for some godforsaken reason, and a low-quality video, right? You're making a six-minute promo that literally has no fucking point. You're talking to your better. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> what is the point? Boy, I'm glad I didn't run to, re to react to this video a week ago. This would have been so underwhelming, right? It's a fucking lie! That's the fucking problem! DSP, Phil Burnell. You know, you, you, you lying to your fans is the problem. It, it's not that you, you know, no, people he, can't have So he has no issue with me whatsoever. Literally, he doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> he, he, if this were three, four years ago, and I was financially distraught like I was at that time, and I was doing streams, hey, please support, right? I then maybe there would have been an issue, you know, because he would have had a point. But all the things that he's criticizing me for are long done. Uh, the, the WWE Champions thing is done. He has zero point. 
He has the 20 seconds left to make a point. Let's see if he does. Crises. There's, there's no doubt about that. But you're a liar and a fraud and a mark and a fucking idiot. And I'm just getting started. Oh, you're just getting started. I cannot wait for more because you have totally won me over with your promo. I mean, it was so well thought out. So original, by the way. What I love is that this man articulated and elaborated on these points so well in such detail. He really got to me because no one has ever said those things he's ever said before. They're totally applicable to today. Wow. Well, that was my first and ever kind of like listening to this man. Man, I mean... There's really, what, how do you even say anything to that? Like, there was no point to that at all. The entire thing was just a waste of what, 15, 20 minutes on my, my podcast? I could have, I could have been sh scratching my ass. I could have been taking a shit. You know, I could have been doing anything that would have been more, more useful to everyone's time, I feel, than watching that six minute waste of life right there. A <laughs> and you can't get the six minutes back. You've wasted those six minutes of your life watching that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, well, I guess it is what it is. I, you know, we did it. We fell for the trap, right? So, I mean, sadly, you just know over time, I'm going to learn more and there's nothing you can really do about it, but it is what it is. I just, I don't see, you know, that was weird. I really thought, I mean, from the way you guys were talking, I thought that like this video was going to have some substance and something to like address. And I was like, this guy actually has issue with me because my detractors have impersonated me or whatever, and he's mad about that. He's literally mad about nothing because he's not mad. He's cutting a promo. He's doing this because he thinks this is he's gonna get over by doing it. The only people he's gonna get over with is the detractors who already ha are, have said this, and and no one cares, right? Like, <laughs> what the hell? All right, we got a couple shout outs to do. We've got. Yorgi Shmorgi VGM with a $10 super chat and says, You deserve it, Phil. Thank you to Yorgi Shmorgi. We got Sarah who says, Please, no more Ethan Ralph segments on the podcast, right? So there you go. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate that. And uh, I did receive a tip a $1.50 tip. So we still didn't get the $5 tip yet. Someone, oh, wow, listen to this. Someone says, some people who are actually black but are your detractors are like are acting like they're they agreeing with and teaming up with Ralph. But what they don't realize is that he's an incredible racist. He said horrible things about black people over the years. I mean, you see what I mean? The lore that comes out. I, have no, I don't know about any of this. Nor, I mean, but you have to understand that people that are my detractors are not intelligent. They never were. You know that, right? Like, they're not... These are not the, the, the brightest bulbs in the pack or the sharpest tool in the shed, right? These people are bandwagoners who will just bandwagon on anything for the sake of saying, hey, I don't like Phil. Even when it doesn't even benefit them, they do it. It doesn't even make sense, you know, that they do it, but they do it anyway. So, <laughs> so dumb. All right. Well, guys, the podcast went a little late today. and That's fine. I appreciate you hanging out. A lot of news topics we covered today. Uh, tomorrow, I'm not sure what we'll talk about, simply because we kind of got through all the game news topics. Maybe there'll be some more for tomorrow. If not, I'll have to you know, see what else we can come up with for tomorrow. All right, but thank you. I would say great show, and uh, I think it's now time to move on. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for an awesome episode of the Level 1 Podcast. I hope you enjoyed it uh, today. I hope you'll stick around for the conclusion of Warhammer 40K Space Marine 2's campaign and for some Marvel vs. Capcom collection tonight. Not, I'll be back tomorrow with another fun podcast as well as a Astrobot continuing and also uh, Street Fighter 6 tomorrow night for Friday Night Fights. All right. So thank you guys so very much. And I hope to see you when I see you. But I hope that you'll stick around for some fun. Peace out and see you tomorrow.